Namaste, it's Sahara Rose, and welcome back to the High Self Podcast, a place where we discuss what makes you your soul's highest development. If it's your first time here, welcome. I'm so grateful to have you here. This is an incredible episode where we dive deep into all things galactic, cosmic, out of this world. So I've been hearing a lot of people talking about what star system they're from, and frankly, I'm like, I don't know. I don't really have any memories of being from another planet. Some people really feel drawn to the nebulous and the cosmos, but for me, my home has always been Earth, especially the oceans, the dolphins. So I always have felt the Lemurian frequency, which I'll speak about in this episode, but the galactic frequency, not so much. And it wasn't until I stumbled across the starseed expert, Paul Silva, on TikTok that he shared with me about one of these star systems, shared a video that went viral. And when I listened to this video, I was like, okay, oh shit, that's my home right there. That is where I'm from. Like everything that he said was so deeply resonant. And if you know me, you know I love a good archetype. I started my career on Ayurveda, which is all about the doshas. I'm all about Enneagram, Myers-Briggs astrology, human design, Vedic astrology. And I've created my own archetypal system, the Dharma archetypes. So Your girl right here loves to get to know herself in a quiz. And this episode, we really dive into many of the different starseed families out there so you can get to know which one that you are from. So if you ever resonated with certain environments or you've noticed patterns amongst people who you really vibe with, that is often related to what star system your soul is from. So first of all, we talk about what that means. Like, is this a physical planet? Like, Are we talking about Venus and Mars here? What are we really speaking about when we speak about star seeds and how is it different than, you know, the planets that we learn about in astronomy? So we start there and then we go into the different star seeds. So we talk about the Pleiadians, the Arcturians, the Mintakans, the Syrians, the Adramamans, the Orions, the Lyrans, and more. We also speak about the frequency difference between Atlantis, which you may have heard about before, the lost civilization, and Lemuria, another lost civilization that predates Atlantis and the different frequencies and even the soul memories that I have had there. So this is definitely a far out episode. So if you love the podcast for just getting weird and getting into it, this is one of those conversations. So I'm curious to hear about what starseed system you are from after this episode. So please share it with me on Instagram and share with me, oh my God, Arcturian AF or Orion AF or Pleiadian AF. I'm, I'm curious to know and I'll reshare them. And I'm curious, I'm gonna do some polls on my IG stories as well. If you're not following me on Instagram, I am Sahar Rose. I'm always polling you guys and sharing with you. So I'm gonna do a little poll to see which starseed system most of you are from. I'm very, very curious. All right, so without further ado, let's dive into Paul Silva's conversation all about the galactic star families. And before we get started, I'd love to share with you this special offer. Are you ready to finally discover your soul's purpose, the big reason why you are here? Well, I've created a free masterclass experience for you where you will discover what your dharma is and how it may be different from your career, how to navigate through having multiple passions, different ways to transition into your dharma, ways to overcome people pleasing and caring what other people think, my number one tool whether knowing a decision is right for you, and journal prompts on the different types of resistance and how they show up for us. All of this is available for you for free in my Discover Your Soul's Purpose Masterclass. You can head over to IamSaharRose.com slash masterclass to join today. Again, that's IamSaharRose.com slash masterclass. And you can find that link in the show notes. I'm super excited to see you in there. Welcome, Paul, to the Highest Self Podcast. It's so great to have you here. Oh, pleasure. Thank you for having me. The first question I'd love to ask you is what makes you your highest self? What makes me my highest self? I feel that it's being authentic. It's, it's cast on, you know, removing the layers of the stories that I tell myself 
that have either been programmed uh, in me or I've internalized. And as I remove more of those and become more open to myself and being able to receive me for who I am, I feel like I connect more and more to my highest self, right? It's, it's, it's being my own guide, you know? In, in, and so, and sometimes it's not easy to let go of those because some stories we've had for a long time and they've served us. And so the real courage, the real um, challenge comes in having the wisdom to let that go, even when it's scary and we don't know where it's going to lead us. But we know, and I know, that when I do that, you know, the universe provides, it always opens and I get closer and I get more clarity and I, and I feel more here, more connection. So it's, it's really just removing what isn't me. Mm, so beautifully said. And how was your journey? You've, you've told me that you were a chef and how is the journey now moving into spiritual work and working with these different star systems? What did that journey of really stepping into your spiritual self look like? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I loved being a chef. It was, uh, there was a passion there, you know, there was something about creation and, mm -hmm. and also the tactile, that kind of 3d kind of, you know, being able to create and, and watch. And what's really cool about when you create food is it disappears. It's, it's, it's gone, right? Like mm -hmm. it just changes into, it's just, it's all energy and it's changing form and from farm to plate to whatever. Um, and so that was, that was a really, like, that was probably at the time, the closest I felt spiritual was just in through that act of creation, right? Coming from creator, we create. And as that started to wane and, you know, part of my story is, is addiction. And so, um, with alcohol and it got to a point where it was completely unmanageable. <laughs> it was just awful. And, uh, when I got sober, that was my first spiritual awakening. You know, I needed to, to spirit was there. Like I was looking for spirit well, but I, this is the spirit I was actually having. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's, it's like what it was like, I wrote a book called longing for the spirit. And it was, it was just like about, you know, the feelings around that and, and, and the growth that came through letting go of something that I thought I needed, right. Going back to highest self removing, I thought I needed that to live, but I was clutching onto something that was killing me. And so that was that, that spiritual awakening. And that kind of just opened the door. Mm -hmm. to what was possible. And as I started to move through that and I started, I was, I was tapped on the shoulder to help others to be of service in a different way. So I got into coaching, which was wonderful too. It was something that I could do this one-on-one -on -one and help people and help them connect to themselves while that helped me to connect to myself even deeper. And, and just in the last, I'd say year, year and a half, uh, letting go of that now. I'm in, I'm in the process of letting that go because now what's, what's happened is it's opened me up to so many other channels uh, on the spiritual, you know, landscape. And, and so everything from, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more drawn to the shamanic side of things. So, you know, journeys and et cetera, et cetera, but also divination, you know, through cards and bones and, and charm casting and, um, you know, star systems and connecting with that and starting with the Claire's, the Claire audience is coming in now. Um, channeling is starting to come in now. And, and through, you know, some, some work with some wonderful mentors and guides and uh, just tapping into the collective and just trusting my own intu intuition, it's now starting to open up even more and more in front of me. And it's like, it's like, I remember having like the first time going into a, a kitchen, like a professional kitchen. And I was like this young little buck. It was so exciting. And I feel the same way. Like I've just got goosebumps now just talking about that because this, this feels like the closest I am to me and I get to be of service to others. It's such a win-win. It's, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Mm, I so resonate with your journey. I don't know if you know this. I also went to culinary school and I have a cookbook. So oh. like food was a huge part of my journey. I was a food blogger for like seven years. Like that's what I did. It was eat, feel fresh. Like that was my whole, my whole career. And then what I realized, it's the same thing. I loved creating the art with the food and the experience mm. and the textures. And it really was a spiritual experience, but I wanted to go in deeper and, you know, got more involved with just co like health coaching and then life coaching. And now 
just channeling and, and receiving. And it's just such a beautiful journey that it takes us through because we need to first heal the physical body and then we can move into the emotional body and then we can move into the mental body and we can move into the, the spiritual bodies. So I love how we both kind of walked those lines yeah. from like the physical of food into this more metaphysical realm now. <laughs> How cool would that be? What's we'll just whip up a dish and then just go do some some, some channeling. Yes, after. <laughs> this is a spiritual protection dish. <laughs> I love it. So I found you on TikTok, which I'm so excited about. And one of your videos came on my For You page and I'm like, this is me. And you were talking about a, cer- a certain star system, a certain star, a certain star system who I'm not going to share which it was because I'm going to let the listeners as they're hearing about the different star systems to feel into what theirs is and let them guess what they think mine is as well, just to start using their intuitions as well. Because a lot of them have heard me on this podcast, so I'm not curious to hear what your guys' takes is. So there are so many different star systems out there. So first of all, when we're talking about star systems, can you explain to people, maybe it's their first time hearing this, like we're not talking about like Pluto and Pluto and Venus and stuff here. No. Can you share a little bit what we're talking about? Yeah. <clears throat> so these are, you know, this is really about star seeds. Mm-hmm. And uh, star seeds generally are souls that are are not from here. From they are from uh, other galaxies, star systems, or planets who have decided uh, to incarnate here for, you know, to help the development of humankind, to raise the the vibration of of Earth, essentially. And, you know, there's a lot of traveling out there that's going on, you know, that there's a lot of different star systems and places, like you said. And and we have traveled, not everyone, like not everyone on Earth is is a star seed, by the way. Um, So we're talking about 1% of the population generally. Of, of who are here now, who have incarnated, who have been from other places and traveled a lot. So, so we're talking about star seeds, and you know, there's common traits around star seeds in general, and then there's more individual traits uh, amongst these. Now, it's not necessarily like you know the, the astrological thing where Scorpio and then all the Virgos are like this and all the Caps are like this. We tend to, we realize with a a chart, there's a lot more. There's the ascendant and where's your moon and all. So we get a clearer picture. Same with this in a way. It's rare that someone is just one in particular. We are a mix because we're we're such travelers. But having said that, we tend to have certain traits that really speak to us a little bit more. And so we can we can start to say like yeah I'm I'm a little bit more this and I feel I can and I get this all the time on TikTok is like oh my god I totally relate to this and I'll be talking about whatever it was and they but I also relate to that other one <laughs> they're confused and I'm saying you could be both it's just you know in just in what regard so these are just generalities but this is about star seeds mm, I love that so would the term for them be star seed families star seed systems what would we call these. Yeah. So, you know, when you talk about the the starseed families and so talking about whether it's Palladian or whatever it is, we're talking about the families. They Mm -hmm. now not all starseeds come from star systems. Mm -hmm. Some will come from planets. Some don't have a a home anymore Mm -hmm. or never really had one to begin with. So it's not necessary that every single starseed has a home. They generally do, but not always. But it is Mm -hmm. we talk about soul, soul families or soul lineage. Mm, beautiful. Lineage, yeah. So let's get into the one that's the most common here on earth, the Pleiadians. Can you share a little bit? How do we know if we are a Pleiadian? Yeah, Pleiadians and Syrians are the like the, the one-two punch of, of, of how many are down here. Pleiadians are, you know, the, the way I see it, like they're the, they're the, it's about the heart. It's all about the heart, the heart chakra. Like it's, it's their, um, they are, so Pleiadians come from Pleiades, uh, Pleiades, which is in Orion, in the Taurus, um, the hunter uh, system. And so Pleiadians are, they tap more into the feminine energy. A lot of them do. Some of them are more masculine or balanced masculine feminine. But Pleiadians are, their whole, their whole gig, their whole jam is turning chaos into, into order, chaos into calm. It's kind of like transmuting that energy. Mm-hmm. And so they're here, all, all, all star seeds, they have kind of like the collective mission and then they have like the personal mission. And so they're all very similar. 
uh, a lot of it, like you can always come down to raising the vibration of, of uh, us around, but for, for them, they also, it's, it's about really opening our hearts, opening our heart, our, our chakras, our heart chakras, and really coming from the place of love. So they teach us to come from the place of love. Um, they are now, they can be perfectionists. They can be, um, they have a, they struggle with things like, um, violence and any sort of thing like, cause again, it's, it's all here and they don't enjoy that kind of uh, energy. Sometimes they may feel like getting sick. <laughs> right. Um, they are, um, they like many star, uh, seeds. They're very much into nature animals. They're very empathetic. Um, they are often water signs. So that, that fluid kind of sense of, of emotion. So a lot of, of star sign or just so as Pisces, Scorpio and, uh, oh my God, how did I miss that last guy? Okay, it'll come to me. Um, they tend to have closed throat chakra. So they have a hard time sometimes communicating and, and they can be people pleasers. Uh, the thing with Pleiadians too, is that they are used to having sort of like, if you, some people believe it or not, like the twin flame idea. And so they come from a place where they feel like there's, uh, they have, there's someone that's down here for them that they can like. And so they, they struggle down here in terms of, uh, not having that. And, and so when they come down here, there's, um, they can really, they really struggle. There's two star seeds that really struggle with personal relationships, like romantic relationships and Pleiadians are one of them. Mm. And so they can get into abusive and manipulative, uh, type of, um, relationships. They struggle to, um, to put their, like to voice themselves, right. Which is why the throat chakra is closed is they have a hard time communicating what their needs are. Um, they're, they're fixers. They want to fix things. And so when they get into those situations where they're with someone who, who can be abusive, it's like, it's like this perfect storm. And so what's important for Palladians to understand is that they have self-worth. Like they, that's part of their journey is to understand that they're worthy of what, what this earth that we're, we're here for a reason, um, to do that. And because they're so sensitive, uh, their job is to move through that to be of service to others, but also to fortify their own spirit, to fortify their own soul. And so because, you know, they're so plentiful, right? Because it's, it's a nearby star system. Um, that's where this, this, this opening up has been happening in terms of, of heart of, of love-based decision-making. Right. And, and we're moving, even though right now we may feel like there's a lot of fear base there's a reason why there's so many here now coming from, from love. We need more love-based decision-making to counter what's kind of been going on lately. And so that, that's essentially plays. I mean, you can get into some of the, the technical things, but they are uh, like, you know, highly empathetic, empath empathetic. They're, um, uh, they're soft-spoken and tend to be polite, but, you know, again, we're just generalizing, you know, you can have a fierce, Palladian who just lives and just takes life by the, by the guts, mm. um, but still come from that, that heart centered place. Is Oprah a Palladian? Is Oprah? Oh, good question. Some of the things you've mentioned, I'm like, I feel like that's like Oprah. Cause I, I see like in doshas. So I see it as a kapha kind of energy. Yeah. I, I mean, I just had goosebumps when you asked me that. So that's mm -hmm. usually... I could ask my uh, pendulum. <laughs> just, <laughs> well, we can we can check in later, but yeah, we can just, check in. But you know what? When the, the fact that you just said that, and and I think about you know her story, and just like the chaos she had growing up, right? And and turning that, and also showing with such a big platform, obviously. Oh man, I still have the goosebumps. Ooh, mm -hmm. that that means a truth just hit us. Mm. Um, I would, I would bet my bottom dollar that if she isn't, she's got a lot of that in it because, because talk about just coming from the place of love yeah. and just being, and, and being a quiet force, mm -hmm. right? doesn't mean that being quiet and polite and all that doesn't mean she's that we lay down. Yeah. For me? She's still very big, but it's through her ability to sit and listen. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good observation. It's a great observation. I, I would, I would bet that if she's not that, there's a lot of that in her. Mm. And so she's a beacon of this love-based um, way of, of showing others how to be love-based. Mm. Yeah. 
So beautiful. So let's hop into the next one. Can you tell us a little bit about the Arcturians? The Arcturians. Okay. So I, I, so the first time I got into, uh, started looking at this and started experiencing it, um, I did like many people, uh, I did like online. I was like, how do I know? How do I know? Cause that's the number one question I get on TikTok. It's like, how do I know? How do I know? There's some other ways I can share later, uh, some ways to, to look at that. Uh, but I did like an online quiz. Actually, I did three, three completely separate quizzes, and they all, and they were very different. Some were visual based, some et cetera, et cetera, and they all said Arcturian. I'm like, okay. And then when I I started to read a little bit, I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then when I I hit some sections, I'm like, oh yeah, that's <laughs> that's that's Paul. Um, so Arcturians are um, they're like five D and up. They're, they're, they're kind of like the doers, not so much the feelers. doesn't mean they don't feel, but they're, they're more the, the doers. They're like the architects, the pioneers. Uh, they're, they're great leaders. Um, they, they're fascinated by ancient civilizations and cultures. Um, now, we can say generally all starseeds, but this one more so, uh, very much into that. Um, they are organized and logical. They're future-based, sort of like the Syrians. Um, they like to take things apart and see how they work. Like, not, not just physically, but also in other ways. When it comes to the, the spiritual side of things, they, like, they tend to gear towards more the mechanic, or sorry, the mathematical side. So, like, sacred geometry, all that kind of, the, kind of getting into that space, or just, like, the nuts and bolts of it, again. Like, they like to take things apart. Um, they... They are guarded, and and I connect that because I, I find sometimes I have a guarded heart, and so they can be they can be guard. Doesn't mean that they're not emotional. They they very are. They they really they they great at combining innovation and creativity, and we have that sort of spirit. But it's there's a little bit of a wall, a membrane there that we are they need. kind of Atlantean. I wouldn't say so much Atlantean. Um, I, I would say more, probably more like Syrian, where mm -hmm. they can, they, I think we, I think unlike Syrians, we have more of the language we can, we can, we can share what we're feeling, mm. but we're just a little, like we're holding our, our cards a little bit to our chest in terms of opening. I, I consider it almost like very Scorpio, kind of typical Scorpio. Like we're good at everyone telling us their secrets, but we don't tell ours very much. Mm. It's a very Scorpio trait. Um, one thing definitely is of all the star seeds, Arcturians have a lot of shadow work. There's a lot of shadow work to, to kind of open up on. And so there, so for Arcturians, for them to step into their fullness, it's important that they look at their shadow work, whether it's come from, from past lives, whether it's coming from, uh, you know, karmic, kind of baggage if it's coming from from where they they came from all their travels looking at their their shadow self is very important mm. and those who and and like any of the other star seeds when they when arcturians fail to tap into that and understand they can get into things like addiction and anxiety and depression and and things like that because they're not they're not leaning into their strengths and they're coming from the place of fear and they're coming from, from those darker, lower uh, energies, as opposed to coming from the place of that fullness of leadership, of innovation, of, of, you know, channeling strength that they can. And so the Arcturians are, are yeah, they're, they, they can be a bit aloof, but they really do have big hearts and they really do mm. care. And they really do. They're of service. They love being of service. Mm. So is like Steve Jobs an Arcturian? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like trying to think of an example love... <laughs> for everyone. Because <laughs> he's a bit, you know, like more scientific reserved. Maybe he's even more Syrian from what you describe a little bit. Yeah, they... Um... Yeah, I don't, I don't, I see where you're coming from with that. I, he could, he could like, or else I would say he was also either Orion or Syrian. Mm -hmm. um, like just a little stand. I, I, I don't know if he, I feel like it would be more, more Orion, like just a little bit more on the deck. But what was great about Steve Jobs is that he, like another thing with Arcturians is that they are drawn to spiritual work, mm -hmm. like especially shamanism mm -hmm. specifically. 
they're they're intelligent also with their spirituality, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. And and you know, he he was very much, especially because he was very innovative. Hello, yeah. Apple, right? Uh, I can see it more. I'd have to. I'd have to think about that one a little bit more, but he, he definitely brings, he combines the two because he mm-hmm. had a lot of that kind of wisdom and sage part mm-hmm. of him. I mean, he was known as much, he was known for his, his words of wisdom as he was for the technology mm-hmm. side. So he did, he did play that both. And it's also, Arcturians are very much masculine, feminine balanced. Mm. Uh, so helpful. Well, let's dive into the next one, the Mintakins. Ooh, <laughs> the Mintakins. All right, so the Mintakins were uh, that. So it's it's a that's that was in Orion as well, and so it's a water based um, homeland, so to speak, and that was destroyed. So that's one of those. That's one of the the star seeds where they don't really have a home to go back to, and so now you might. One common trait around all star seeds is that there's a sense of homesickness, but not all star seeds have that. Um, I'll probably cover one or two or more of those later. But even though they they don't have a home, um, some Mintakins have that homesick feeling. Some have tempered it down. But the most important thing is the water, right? There's this this connection to to water. Um, we're talking about the planet where they have like dolphins and whales, mer people, uh, so like mermaids. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they, for the Mintakin, it's all about love and unity. And so obviously when they're they're down here, part of their thing is, and, and Mintakins and uh, 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 who's else? There's a few, like especially the water-based planets, they have a really hard time adjusting down here. Because of the water there is so much lighter and more trans, like it's like glass up there, and and it's also lighter. So there's a buoyancy of it. There's like this brilliancy in this water, and so to come from that, like almost like 12D, almost that nine 12D energy to come down here to this dense 3D, it's a real struggle uh, for for Mintakins. Um, so they too. They struggle with a lot of the hard stuff, but they can be people pleasers. They are often let down and disappointed uh, when they're connecting with other people because they have certain expectations and often they're let down. It's not that they're naive. It's not that. It's because they're so open. Like it's like, you know, cancer, the belly. It's just that that's just their nature that they're, they're open, like they're, they're fluid and, and free. They're free spirits. And so with that, they get the slings and arrows and they can, they can feel let down or betrayed by, by certain people. <laughs> um, they, I mean, is, but having said that, um, they stay, they're very, they're, they're great at committing to something. Uh, they enjoy the finer things. They're like the Lyrans. They like, they like a little nice bag. They like a nice car. They like, uh, you know, they're very much about um, just feeling and enjoying. Um, they are, um, they can be controlling at times. So all, all of these traits can be flipped, right? It's like it, they can get tripped into the, the, the shadow side of things. Uh, the Mintakins are also very much about um, bringing out their, their best qualities, but also best qualities in others. And so part of their mandate is not only love and unity, but, but drawing out of you what is best for themselves and for others, right? And I keep thinking of this, this, this water, this fluidity, this, there's, you know, there's this, this continuum in the water, right? Like, it's like, what's that thing? You, you can, you don't stand in the river twice. Like you, you stand in it. This, the river I stand in is not the river. I can't remember the, the, the whole expression, but there's this, this, there's this motion and movement. And so Mintakins are very much about staying in that motion and growing and opening things up for people. And, and it serves them to help others. Now, the things that they have to really watch out for is being that overly sensitive and to be able to, to stand their ground, um, to not be afraid of, uh, you know, technology, to not be afraid of um, using their voice, essentially. 
And it's, it's really hard for them, especially in this type of energy. It's very dense for them. And so it feels like they're stuck. They can't really move. And that's like spiritually as well, mentally, emotionally. And so they open themselves up, but that's just who they are. You can't stop them. You can't stop that love train. <laughs> so good. All right. <laughs> I'll let people guess at the end. <laughs> I'm <pretty laughs> <still> like, <gasps> you're giving it all away. Okay. I'll just come out of the closet that I am a Mintakin. <laughs> I believe. Am I? What do you think? Well, you know, it's funny is when we first connected on uh, TikTok, uh, you said, hey, can you take a look at my account and see what, and I looked at, I'm like, oh my God, you're Mintakin. Like, and I think I I responded to you. I said, you're Mintakin, like for Mm -hmm. sure. I was like, either that, Sirius B, Lumerian or Lemurian or- I'm Lemurian um, too, for sure. Because this sounds like Lemuria to me. There, like, here's the thing. There's a lot of crossover with these because mm-hmm. these are celestial beings who are traveling from one place to the other. They, there's a lot of, like, they meet each other. There's a lot of this, this um, uh, I don't want to say cross-contamination. That's the wrong word. That's a culinary <laughs> term mm-hmm. I'm thinking of. But it's, there's this, this, this melding pot of, of things that happen. And so, uh, yeah, Lemurians are very much the same way. Very sensitive. Very, they, they, they too struggle with being here. Mm-hmm. on with this energy because they too were in the water um, and they got dispersed everywhere as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think, yeah. So when I saw your thing, I was like, no, that's Mintakin, right? Like, yes, Sirius B, there is some of that um, uh, Andromedans because their, their planet's 85% water. So they have that as well, mm-hmm. but there's, I don't know. My gut, my gut just said, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Th- that's actually the video I found you on the Mintakin video. And it's so funny because when I'm on land for too long or and I haven't been in water, it's like I need to go into the water to just decompress and release and recalibrate. And and even in the wounds that you were speaking of, my biggest thing is like that I'm so open hearted and I want to help everyone. I want to bring joy to the world. And then people don't see it and they misunderstand me. And then like taking it so personally and getting really sensitive and feeling like, am I even really making a change? And that's like that. Thing, but I would say I don't, I never felt homesick per se. Like I wasn't mm-hmm. one of those people that was like, oh, I wish I could go back to my planet. Yeah. I always felt this deep sense of like, I love the earth and I love being here in nature. And I think it's because of that water element that there is the water here. But um, I think you said in one of your videos, it, it may have been the Andromedan one that it's, I don't resonate with like the dark like scary sea, it's that mm. light, like, you know, and I have kind of memories of this, of like the, the swimming pools that we would swim in, like naked with the tribe, playing the drums and singing and dancing around it. Like that, when I went to the Nepali coast in Hawaii, it was like, this is my soul's home right now. The waterfalls, like that type of just crystalline water. Yeah, they, that makes sense. And, and they say too, with, uh, uh, Lemuria, like part, like they'll say like Hawaii, Fiji, Australia, like those are like uh, even Thailand. Mm-hmm. Those are parts of what, what that would have looked like, uh, Lemuria. Like, so it's almost like we have reminders of, mm-hmm. of that. And so because there's that, that, that you re- resonate so much to that, then it makes sense that you don't necessarily feel homesick. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so many, and I can relate to the homesick. I've, I, I even, did a video on TikTok saying, I feel homesick. Like, I feel like, like, all right, I'm done. Can I go home now? <laughs> mm-hmm. So, but not everyone feels like that because there is that connection that they find here. There's an anchor that for, and so for you, you have your anchor. And so the, that, that keeps you here. A little, and, and so, and I wonder if that also helps you personally as you grow yourself and putting yourself in front of so many more people is having that anchor. You're not, you're not feel like you're, you're staring off into the sky mm-hmm. that you have something here that, that, you know, just keeps you here and keeps yeah. you grounded. Mm, I know this episode is good, but so is this sponsor. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. 
It is so important to have someone that you can openly talk to about your issues and what's going on. Sometimes we use our friends as therapists, but that's really not what they're for. Our therapist is our therapist. And I know in my life, it has been beyond helpful to have someone hold space for me so I can openly speak about what's going on in my mind and have someone to reflect back my thoughts at me so I can find more clarity and overcome any anxiety that I have been feeling. So I am so excited to be partnering with BetterHelp. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. You can even message your therapist throughout the week for additional support. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. So please don't wait weeks to find someone to talk to. There has never been a more important time to invest in your mental health because you, my friend, are your greatest asset. Again, and this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Highest Self Podcast listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Sahara. Again, that's betterhelp.com slash Sahara for 10% off. Yeah, I have this deep sense of like, I volunteered here to help assist humanity and I am here to help the humans. So I think that's the difference. Whereas my husband, he's very like, if there was a starship that came and said, you can come with me to this other planet, he'd be like, bye. <laughs> whereas <laughs> <I'm, out>. <laughs> whereas <laughs> I think a lot of what we have seen on, on the media of, of galactic beings, aliens, extraterrestrials, it has been this very masculine, technological, silver, without the earth and the feminine. So that is why to me, I'm like, I don't want to be on Mars where there's no trees and there's no nature and (laughs) and earth where some people do. So that's why I've always resonated with Lemuria because it's that frequency of the, of the feminine, of the heart of, of the joy. So does Mintakin also have that kind of more feminine frequency? Oh yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. They're, 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 you know, most of them, most of them resonate more on the feminine side. There's a couple uh, that are masculine and feminine. I'd say masculine, there might be, I'd say maybe the Lyran, uh, maybe the Orion. They tend to be more on the feminine side because we're, we're, we're talking on energy. Like they take, when you think of masculine, protective, guardian, all that, you know, uh, uh, providing uh, action, all that kind of stuff. They do, but at the core of it, there's there's more of that that growth, nurturing, opening type of, of spirit, that mothering type of spirit. Uh, but Mintakin, yeah, for sure. I I personally think it's it's more on the feminine side. Mm-hmm. It, it definitely has that energy about it. Um, and they can still create and still do. They still have the masculine to, to take the, the, the action. But overall, when you feel, and even just feel it, like even just as, as we're talking about it, I just feel that sort of like divine feminine energy. And that's, and that's how... You know, we're we're on a we're on a, a a plane here, a planet where the the feminine is not. You know, everything is based on the masculine spirit, the masculine energy. You know, all everything is rewarded. You know, if, if it's masculine, the feminine is not is not respected or seen as the way it it needs to be seen. It's not seen as equal, mm-hmm. and and that's part of why we need so so much more of this feminine energy to help really balance that out. Mm, absolutely. And yes, and that's why I love Lemuria. And, you know, here in Miami, the waters are very Atlantean, like Atlantis was Bahamas, also some say Ibiza. And I feel the difference in those frequencies is Lemuria was all about the spirit and connection and community and trusting nature. Whereas Atlantis was, how can we merge spirituality and science? Right. And like, yeah, create technology and it was like the basis of like literature and culture and you know the kind of the greek tenets of society and i see like someone like dr joe dispenza super that atlantean energy of merging science and spirituality Mm -hmm. but i i feel my dharma is more not so much in the innovation and science realm but rather the no nature already is perfect as it is like let's start focusing on that a little bit more yeah, precisely. And and we need more of that energy. Mm-hmm. We need more of that returning to na- nature has all the answers, mm-hmm. right? We've butchered it, continue to butcher it when it has that, has all of that. Uh, that's why shamanism 
calls me because it is about nature mm -hmm. and it's like tapping into the wisdom that's already here as opposed to tamping it down and trying to create our own stuff on top. And we're just, yeah. we're, we're taking away from what has already been provided for us and what can give us everything we need. Mm, yeah, exactly. And I think that, you know, certain people are here to merge spirituality with science and like, how beautiful is that? We need, you know, these different innovations and technologies. And some people are called to grounding mats and these bands that they wear and all these different devices. But it's just for me, it's like, why tamper with something that's already whole? So just we're all here coded in different ways to bring different qualities that need to be here. Precisely. Yeah, it's we're, we all all hands on deck and we all have different parts and roles to play. And, it, and you know, going back to the mission for Starseeds, there's a collective mission, which is the overall mission. But we all have our personal missions and they're all very different. And those might include karma or they might include, you know, like cleaning up things that we in past lives, et cetera, or, you know, north south node kind of stuff in uh, astrology is. Um, you know, continuing to learn, continuing to teach. But so for some people, personal mission might be just, that's why, sorry, and I'm jumping, but that's why star seeds are scattered so much mm -hmm. around, right? Because it's like 1%. So we're needed in certain areas to spread this around. And so for someone's personal mission, maybe just, you know, improving the lives of like four people, their family, and that's it. Like that's, that's their mission is to just create this beautiful, wonderful family that, could, and for some people it could be, like could be like an Oprah, right? Mm -hmm. It could be like, like, you know, yourself as you open up to huge amounts of people. And that's, that might be your personal mission, but also involved in that is this inner work that you, that we all need to do so that we can tap into our highest selves. Right. And mm -hmm. so we all have different personal missions, but overall we're here to, to, to elevate yes. where we, where we need to be to elevate the earth, the, the vibration. And bring Absolutely. us back into equilibrium, into a place where we can start to grow. Mm, yes, aho to that. So let's hop into the Orion. Can you share with us a little bit more about Orion people? Yeah. Orion is, um, you know, they can come across as cold. And Orion, it's interesting because Orion does have, there's some people who, who dislike Orion. They, there's Because they, they have been known to be aggressive. And they have been involved in some wars. I don't have, like, you can spend years studying <laughs> all the wars and all that. With So, like, on for example, on TikTok, when I started talking about Orions, I had some people in the comments saying, no, Orions. Rah, rah. So there was, you know, there were some haters for Orion. <laughs> uh, but generally, you know, they sort of like the reptilians, mm. right? Like, there's, there's the lower and then there's, like, the reptilians who have advanced. They're here to, they have their own... Um, uh, missions and part of their mission is to balance out the damage done by the lower um, energy reptilians. So Orion, not not as you know, black and white. There, Orions are here generally to uh, help us with innovation, science, tech. You were just talking about that. That's mm -hmm. part of the thing. I kind of picture them like the Vulcans, you know, the Spock, you know, kind of on the front may seem as cold and calculated, but they really do. They're really compassionate. Um, they so much into learning. They, they just let them loose in the library. They're they're happy. Um, they make great students. They'll be the one uh, after class asking all the questions over and over. They're the ones that everyone's like, okay, come on, quiet, Scott. Like I just want to go. And they're the ones who are going to ask questions. And and because of that, they also make great teachers. Um, so there's like knowledge, technology. Um, they also are interested in. Um, looking to insert like technology into a bit of the spirituality. That's not their main thing, but they, cause that's part of their work is to open themselves up, you know, open up their heart to open up uh, themselves. They, they too struggle with personal relationships because they're just a little too direct. Uh, they have wicked senses of humor. Uh, but in terms of like, they don't read the room as well as maybe other people do. And so they have a, they struggle in terms of that uh, interpersonal skill set, those soft skills. Um, they are great planners. They have strong opinions. Um, they work better in small groups or alone. They need some of that alone time. Um, but a lot of their energy, uh, I would say there's there's more masculine energy in this. 
a lot of this is organizing and planning and structure and and creating they can they can they can be artists and stuff still but they definitely do like to um, uh, organize as well they're like great organizers and so part of their mandate here is to help us evolve technologically but for them it's also learning to soften themselves up mm. and so because they can come across as arrogant they can come across as a know-it-all and they have to learn to soften their language, soften their voice, uh, realize that they're not the only one around. <laughs> There's other people around you. And, and it's, in, it's in their best interest because they have so much, they, they do have compassion. It's just, it's just shielded in so many ways with this, this understanding and this logical. And, and that logic can be great because they can be cool under pressure. You know, when, when stuff's flying, they can just boom, boom, boom. They, that's, they're that person that can just, that's calm, grace under fire. But on the flip side is that they can be come across as calculating, um, you know, unemotional, but they do, it's in there. And once you get to know them, they open up, but really it's just about soft. I just keep thinking of softening. They just, that's part of their, their mandate for themselves, because when they can soften themselves, that energy also exudes out. And so people can realize that you can have this balance and you can have this wonderful person with that, that, that humor and just that sharp wit and that, that keen eye, um, but also that they can relate to. Mm. So that's Orion. Sounds like my dad. <laughs> I, I was yep. wondering who you were thinking of. I can see that you were yep. thinking of someone. That's him. Can't read the room. That's him. Like, <laughs> so now I have some compassion. He's from Orion. I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> love it so let's hop into the andromedan people what are they like andromedans are the i call them the, like the freedom fighters the quiet warriors if you have a cause or something you want them on your squad um they are creative but logical they they're kind of like childlike they're introverted they have that little inquisitive nature about them um, they are empathetic. They're very much about truth. Um, a lot of these star seeds are also, you know, and, and Andromedans for sure are like human lie detectors. And, and because of energy, because so many uh, star seeds are so attached and in tune with energy, we can tell a lot of times Andromedans for sure. Andromedans, uh, like I was mentioning, have the, um, the water aspect as well. So there's that, that emotional, empathic, highly sensitive person energy to them as well. Um, they struggle between like what they should do and what they want to do. Um, cause they can get into people pleasing as well. They, um, they can, their, their, their job for themselves, cause they can be very self-critical and they can lack confidence on the outside. They exude, they, they, cause they're, they're that warrior leader type. And you, you be shocked. I'm like, really? You have lack of confidence? You don't seem like, but that's part of their struggle. Uh, the one big thing too is freedom. Freedom is huge for them. Uh, it's one of their core values, if you will. And generally, uh, they distrust the government. They're kind of, they love the conspiracy theories. I mean, I love them too. Uh, but they, because they feel like it's constricting them. And also, you know, reptilians, speaking of reptilians, they have a great distrust for reptilians because of past history. Uh, and so they're also the type of say, yeah, the you know, reptilians are running. It's all corrupt. Everyone's corrupt. Social media is corrupt. They tend to think that way. Not every single person does, of course, but generally is that mistrust or that distrust for, for uh, authority. Um, hard to pin down because of freedom that sometimes, yes, they'd be travelers and all that, but hard to pin down in a relationship, hard to pin down like in a nine to five cubicle kind of job. Um, but they are, um, they have a, they're a great masculine feminine balance and, you know, they will go to bat for you. You mm. know, they just won't go to bat for themselves as much. Mm. Yeah. Sounds like Enneagram eight, the challenger. The challenger. I have a friend who's like this. She's very into, you know, sharing about the government and all about freedom and just like such a rebel by spirit. So when you, when you were sharing about this, it really reminded me of her. So, and her eight is her Enneagram. So that's how I was like, Hmm, there's a connection here. 
Oh, I love. Yeah. What are you? What number are you? I'm a seven three. So seven, seven. is the enthusiast. Three is the achiever. So I'm like, mm. I want to experience life and have fun and joy, but like also I will like really work hard towards something. And I have eight planets in Capricorn in Western astrology. So, oh, <laughs> so yeah, coming in oh, with that. Oh, you're one yeah. of those. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and then eight planets in Sagittarius and Vedic astrology, which is like the seven. So it's like I'm both. You're 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 all in, aren't you? <laughs> yes. Work hard, play hard. <laughs> all right. That's so awesome. let's dive into the Syrians, and I know there's Sirius A and B. So I'm curious if there's a difference between the frequency of the two. Yeah, there's also Sirius C, and Sirius mm. C is more of a dimensional type thing. And, you know, what's interesting is someone um, left a message on my TikTok when I talked about Sirius, like, you know, those are stars, right? Like, they're not planets, because I'm referring to planets. What, what I, I hadn't responded, but, you know, if we're talking about higher dimensions, it's not like, <clears throat> it's not always a physical place. Like, the, the you know, when you look at it's Syrian, like, you have... Um, if you were to have an actual physical planet there, it would just burn up in seconds with all the, the heat from the stars around there. But when I talk about homes, I'm talking more like higher dimensional mm-hmm. homes rather than a planet. So yeah. Sirius, so Sirius C is considered a home, but it's 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 a dimensional, a higher dimensional place. Sirius A and B tend to be uh, put together. Sirius A is I believe is the larger one. I got, I'm not 100 percent sure. I, I can't remember. Um, Sirius B is more is the water is another water planet, but they 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 tend to kind of cross in terms of just general uh, characteristics. So I, I I haven't put the only differentiate the only difference for me is that Sirius B has is that water planet, and so that too has like you know people that are more from Sirius B who are more into nature and all that obviously will tend to go more towards uh, sea creatures, right? Rather than like a house cat, they'd rather like hang out with the dolphins or have a fish or whatever it is. So, but in terms of just overall, there's not a, you, you won't find a lot online in terms of delineating the two because they do carry a lot of, of, of that. Um, Syrians are, are kind of like the peacekeepers and the guardians they're the protectors. Um, they, um, they're when I run into Syrians, like i just feel them as a calming influence. They have a, they have a calming influence they have, but at the same time, they have a sense of authority. So, you know, that type of leader or boss you had who like you felt comfortable around, but you knew there was a line. Uh, and, and Syrians are, are very much like that. They're quiet. They have a lot of integrity. Um, they are highly spiritual uh, they are also, uh, they feel deeply like it's one of those, they're the type that like just love fast, love deep. And, and they take that on. And of course, when you open like that, you can get hurt. And so that's, that's part of, of them. They, um, they do better sort of like the Orions. They, they like having a smaller group of friends, a smaller circle because they too have a hard time because they love and and feel deep they have a hard time uh, connecting with people because it hurts right they open up their hearts and they just it it feels like it gets kicked in somehow Uh, so they are very much about being of service to others Um, syrians are beautiful people I, i love their energy it's kind of a quiet powerful energy and especially when you have the, the water involved, sort of like we were talking about the Mintakins, there's that, that fluidity, that um, vibrancy with Syrians. But they also, they also stand their ground. They're very much about being in the present. And, and they, they inspire others. You know, they're very much about, again, we talked about some of them, their gift is being able to see the gift in others. And and that alone is is a power that that comes from from that that space where they they know that they love and, and feel deeply, but they can carry they can pass that on to others so they can those other people can love themselves more because sometimes they will attract people who may try to harm them like um, like emotionally, but they're also attracting people who need that love 
in return. And so they see this kind of love being modeled and it, and it goes back out to them, if that makes any sense. Mm, yeah. So I'm imagining they're just like cuddly care bears who love people, but have a really small tight knit, tight knit yeah. group of friends because they can sometimes maybe see things in other people that make them a little bit guarded to let new people in. Yeah. Yeah. And they're very loyal and devoted. You know, they make great um, companion souls, companion spirits. Um, mm. And, but don't take that all for like lightly either. Like they have that energy that they can put their foot down mm. and they can, again, create that, that authority because they do, they're very intelligent. They're creative. They tend to go in arts. They, 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 they can create change. They can be influencers without having to, stomp around on everyone right they can come at it from a quieter place and people get uh, inspired and motivated by them mm -hmm. yes yeah, so one of my best friends definitely syrian so love that and lastly can we hop into the lyrans yeah the lyrans I, I joke they're kind of like one of the ogs they're one of the older um uh older spirit souls i mean around um, they're big travelers. Uh, they, they actually were one of the first, like, I think the, they are the ancestors of the Pleiadians. So they've been around for a while. And so they, they got tossed around, um, when they had to move, they love being here on earth. They're like the blue rays. They don't struggle. <laughs> they don't struggle with the homesickness thing. They love being here. They love like buying things they like they they're trendy they are very much about living here like they see earth as a playground and they're here to just enjoy it again sort of like blu-rays they're very similar in that way and so they don't have that homesickness they feel like in tune with what's going on here um they're fiercely independent they are you know they can be almost like misfit e uh they're great leaders uh, speaking of influencers, you know, I, I think of some of um, some of the social media influencers I know, and I'm like, oh, yeah, they're Lyrans for sure, because mm -hmm. they have that that aura. And they also attract they have this this big energy, even though many times uh, they do they are introverted, but it's like their actions speak louder than words. And and but because there's so much into it there, they love to indulge. Um, they enjoy life. They need. um they too need to open themselves up a little bit more because they, they, they're so busy. They want to make a mark so badly that they will sacrifice personal connection in some ways to do that. Um, there's something about cats. There's like a connection to cats there. Uh, they can be And clumsy. do they often look like cats? Because that's what I've Some of them, before. yeah, like, like we didn't get into it, but there's, there's certain characteristics. Like it's hard to say because of so many, all the cultures and everything we have on the earth, it's hard to say that they have this, this, and this. But some may have like feline um, characteristics uh, mm -hmm. with them. Um, they, and so they can, like, I think of, Cats, when they fall, like they always land on their feet, but they can be clumsy at the same time. I think of cats knocking over stuff and tripping and things like that. But uh, Lyrans are very warm and they're powerful and they're genuine. And they're very much about uh, being unique. They like to, they like to stand out. Mm. Um, but, but like I said, that influencer energy, and that's what brings, that's how they elevate other people's energy is, is exuding that, that sort of, it's like almost like a very grounded because they've been around for so long. They, they're very grounded that way. And, and that, that warmth is kind of like, I, I think of uh, King energy, mm -hmm. right? When I think of, of uh, archetypes, it's kind of very much like, like the King energy. Uh, it can be queen energy, of course, but more of that. I always think of like King of Pentacles, just ground. It's like, it's like the dude abides. Like, it's like, it's like the big Lebowski. I think of him as the dude sometimes. And the Lyran is, is kind of that, that sort of been there, done that man. And is able to just like a sense of like, a, like they know it's like they have an inner knowing, but they're open to share it. But it's, it's getting past that. Like they can come across as aloof. They can come across as um, a little bit too wacky. And so people just step away from them because they're so much into trying to stand out. 
And so their struggle, their, their challenge is to stay grounded and connected to others so that they can grow at the same time. Mm. Yes. I've heard some of them also may have curly hair, like lionesses. Yeah. Lions too. Yeah. Any of those, those, those feline. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And are there any other physical characteristics? Someone once told me I had Arcturian eyes because they have almond shaped eyes. Have you heard of this? I have. Yeah. It's, I, I I don't pay attention to a lot of the physical characteristics just because we're so we're so different. Like some of them might be more Nordic. I'm trying to remember which one is, is that like some might be more Nordic. I heard Pleiadians. Like, yeah. Yeah. Like, like, they're, Na- they're like Native taller. American as well. Yeah. And it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's hard. Like I just think of, you know, if you're, if that's the case and you're a five foot two <laughs> person, right. you know, like how, how does that translate? But, and some of them like uh, we didn't talk about, but you know, some of the star children, like rainbow, crystal, et cetera, indigo, um, they have certain features too, but some of them are just, there is, there is no characteristic. It's just mm-hmm. more of the energy rather than the, the features. But yeah, I've heard the almond eyes or the feline kind of thing, or maybe uh, smaller in stature, Arcturians, sometimes a bit smaller in stature, et cetera, et cetera. So you can go off of that. I wouldn't put too much. Personally, I wouldn't put too much into that just because of the variety that we have down here. Yeah. And I think it's also sometimes a frequency thing. Sometimes you see people of different cultures, but they have a similar feel to how they look. And it's something that's like beyond any sort of cultural um, difference. Are there any physical characteristics for Mintakins or any of the other ones? Uh, Mintakins, I, you know, I, I, do we have mermaid tails? (laughs) (laughs) tails. It's like some people do tend to are drawn to the more physical aspects. Personally, I, I, I tend to look more at the, just the, the energetic kind of profile. Um, because I think that is more telling than necessarily like kind of like their facial structure or maybe just how they walk or anything like that. But I know some people like to look at that as well. But uh, I just feel, and it's, it's, for me, it's like a feeling, right? Like, just like when I knew, when I saw your stuff, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm in Tacken. Like, it's just, yeah. because I wasn't looking at like your features or anything. I was just, I was just going by the vibe. That's how I feel and, with mystical beings. I can see sort of if someone is a fae, elf, gnome, mermaid, you know, and it's just this energetic thing. And like, sometimes it's like, if I showed you like Ed Sheeran, it's like, duh, gnome, like we can all see that. Or like, <laughs> you know, like certain people is like, duh, like pink pixie glow. Um, but yeah. then other people too, it's just like, you just feel into it and you just know yeah. it to be true. <laughs> <laughs> I'll spit my drink out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went. I was doing a bunch of stories, just like showing all these celebrities. I'm like, this is a fairy. This is a mermaid. <laughs> yeah, like they can have some. Like sometimes that people have that el- those elven features. Yes. Or sometimes they have like those dwarf and like you know. I just think of like Lord of the Rings and mm-hmm. kind of like those kind of features. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess you can go. You can, you can probably go deep into that. And, mm-hmm. and like you said, just point people out and just kind of get a general feeling or, or, you know, read on Mm -hmm. them. Because our physical bodies are manifestations of our souls. Like our souls chose our bodies, our faces for a reason. And it's part of our mission. And then our bodies also shift and morph to embody the energy that we're tapping into. So I, with Ayurveda, the same thing, and also Chinese face reading, like just Mm -hmm. from physically looking at someone, there's like certain, and we're all doing it all the time. We just don't really know how and what we're picking into, but like even with Ayurveda, like people with rounder faces tend to be more kapha, which we tend to, we tend to feel like this is a more personable person because Mm -hmm. they have a rounder face than someone that has a really long and angular face. We might think of them as long, more vata or super angular, more pitta. And that creates our own, you know, sort of like maybe even stereotypes of what we think about this person. But the reason why they're there is because it's like throughout nature, tried and true, we started to notice patterns amongst, oh, the people who look like this are like that. Mm. So it can be very helpful. And it's important to go beyond physical feature because it truly is beyond that. It's an auric energetic thing. Yeah. And I, you are right. There is something about like, we did choose this vessel, this container. Mm-hmm. And so there is something to, there are clues mm-hmm. in there and, and why, you know, someone is X amount of, you know, so tall and so much, you know, so many pounds and someone is more petite and like there's, there's, there's a connection between like their, their purpose 
and yes. where they're supposed to be and how they're supposed to do it. So mm-hmm. I think you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Some people are like, I have these friends, they're twins and they're, they're super small, but they're like tiny, but mighty. And that's their whole thing. Like that's like their slogan for their lives. If they're like loud and they're ambitious and they get what they want, but they're like 410, you know? And then there's like (laughs) other people who are like gentle giants that someone might look at them and be like, oh my God, you're huge. But it's like, they're so soft and gentle inside. So sometimes too, like we, we chose our physical characteristics to break a norm of what we think of that person. A hundred percent. You're, uh, you beat me to that. I was going to say it's, it's, it's breaking that, that stereotype. So you see someone tall and you, the, you know, all the basketball jokes come out and then they're like the, the softest kitten inside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And for them, it's, it's demonstrating that, you know, inside is there's a strength and a different kind of strength as opposed to outside when we think of, of strength. Yeah. It's fascinating. I love, mm-hmm. I love seeing that dichotomy. So good. Well, I could chat with you about all of this for hours and it's been so much fun. So where can listeners connect with you further? Uh, I am, well, I'm on TikTok, The Real Paul Silva, uh, Instagram as well. And uh, therealpaulsilva.com, I'm going and just building that now, but uh, probably by the time you see this, it'll be up and ready. And so any of those, any of those platforms, you'll, you'll catch me. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for being here and sharing your wisdom today. Oh, thank you. Pleasure. Pleasure. Thank you. Wow. So fascinating. I could talk about stuff like this forever. And I so deeply resonate with Paul's journey of, you know, really beginning with food and healing the body and then these different powers unlocking within you. And I see that happen so often in the spiritual journey. It begins with the healing journey. And as you heal, you start to access more of your intuition more of your soul's memory prior to this lifetime, and then more of these cosmic codes begin to unlock. So again, share with me on Instagram which starseed family you're from. I'm going to do a poll on my IG stories as well. Share this episode. Encourage your friends and families to listen to the episode too. That was really helpful for me to know what starseed family my dad is from because now I will have a lot more compassion around you know why he is the way that he is and see the benefits and the gifts in that as well. So it's just a beautiful, new, and textured way to get to know your friends and family on a deeper soul level. So please share this conversation. Tag me at I am Sahara Rose, and I'm so excited to see it. So I hope you loved this conversation and I would love for you to leave a review. So please share a review with me if you're listening to this on iTunes and take a screenshot of that review so I can send you a free gift as my thank you. You can email that free gift over to Sahara at IamSaharaRose.com. Take a screenshot of your review and I will send you a free gift of my unreleased book, Eat Right for Your Mind Body Type, which is a deep Ayurveda book all about eating right for your dosha. So again, take a screenshot of your review and send it over to Sahara at IamSaharaRose.com and I will send you over my free ebook. I hope you love this conversation. Share it with people that you think it may resonate with. And I'll see you in the next one. Namaste. 